been on it. Drew, I know that that the the past history of the program in the tournament doesn't doesn't have a lot to do with the guys right now. But you know, for a program that's looking for its first tournament win in eleven years, is, is there a bit of an under underdog status that uh, this team can can maybe latch on to? Um, I mean, I think so. I think just the the fact that we none of us have been here before. Um, just, I mean, obviously JT and Mitch were here earlier, but other than that, this is all of our first trip to the tournament. So, I mean, I think just having that chip on your shoulder and playing with it is definitely something that we can kind of attach to. Did matter? Hey, Drew, I know you, that first year you were at Missouri, you, you hoped to play, but you didn't get eligible. You had to sit out. But had you played, you may not be part of this year's team. Did you ever look back on that and at that sit-out year? And is there any appreciation for it? I mean, just the – not not getting that chance was yeah, there any yeah, positives I, out of that i think so i mean like you said obviously you want to play um you never want to have to sit out but after those first couple of weeks when the decision was made and i knew i wasn't going to play i was i mean i was thankful for it just to kind of get that i think it just gave me a better chance to adjust and get used to this play style and everything like that mitchell 40. Drew, Coach has talked a couple times about uh, when you all kind of took that COVID pause before the Texas A&M game, the, the staff talked to you about maybe being a little bit more assertive offensively. I'm curious if you can just remember what, what those conversations were like and what were some of the things you had to maybe adjust? Yeah, they were just kind of talking to me about just playing more aggressive on the offensive end, just um, looking for my shot, making sure that um, I wasn't passing up open shots and just telling telling me really that if if we wanted to win, which is obviously what we want to do, then I'm going to need, they need me to be more aggressive on offense. So that's kind of, that's where it was. Eric Blum. Hey, Drew, kind of a big picture question. Is there a moment that just hit you? Like I'm playing in an NCAA tournament, is it looking at the background behind you in your home state or is there any moment you can share with us? Like, okay, we're here. Um, I mean, I think just get just getting here and getting settled, getting, getting all your bags up to the room. Um, turn the tv on and there's some guy explaining all the protocols and everything but i think just getting here and um getting through everything just getting unpacked really is whenever you're kind of like all right like we're here and um just understand what you're here for as well Blair, kind of along those lines drew i'm, I'm wondering what's available to players outside of practice and meetings and and eating, uh, I'm just curious about life in the bubble. Um, I mean, a lot of us brought our um, Xboxes and Playstations. And so we've been doing that in our off time, um, just kind of connecting that way, being able to talk to everybody through there. And then um, it looked like some of the team, like um, Wisconsin's room is right across from ours. And I think they had a ping pong table in there yesterday. But there, I mean, there's some there's some stuff to do, but really mostly we've been kind of playing the Xbox and just playing the game systems more than anything in our downtime. Jack? Hey, Drew, uh, I know I asked you about this last time, but after you watch the tape, uh, I, what, what have you seen from Reeves? And I assume you're hoping to guard him. So how much are you looking forward to that matchup? I mean, yeah, definitely looking forward to it. He's a, he's a great basketball player. And I think he just understands how to play the game. He plays at his own pace. Um, he has a, he does a great job of getting fouled. Um, he scores at all three levels. So I think um, it'll definitely be a good matchup. And yeah, I mean, he's just a really good basketball player. Adam? Hi, Drew, I cover Ohio State basketball and they've got Oral Roberts here on Friday. I know you opened the season with them. I just wonder if you remember anything about preparing for them and what it was like preparing for a, a guy like Max who can score at a, at a pretty high level. Yeah, I mean, he's just he's just a really good scorer. And sometimes there's there's not a lot you can do with guys like that. Um, you just have to maybe hope that he's having an off night or that he you just can't let him get as many looks up, that many looks up. Um, other than that, they just they're just a they're a good basketball team. They do a good job of spreading the floor. And um, I mean, I think that I think that they have they have a good chance to surprise some people, but I mean, you never know. Thank you. Great. Drew, I'm curious if you were ever at uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, before and uh, how that experience was in quarantine. Uh, yeah, no, I had never, I had never been, I mean, I've driven past and seen it and stuff, but I never had been inside or anything like that. So it was definitely cool. It was uh, 
obviously it'll be a memory that we have forever just kind of seeing seeing our name pop up there so it was definitely a good experience mason hey drew coach said on sunday that uh you guys are going to look over last year's oklahoma game tape to prepare for saturday are there any stark differences between the film from november 2019 versus this year's team um as far as our team or their team as far as their team I mean, yeah, they have some. They have some new guys. I think um, they have some new guys that are in their starting lineup, Harkless and Gibson. So I think the teams are a little different, definitely. But I mean, at the end of the day, they also are. They're also very similar. So, I mean, I think that we'll be able to definitely look back at that tape and figure out some things that we can do. Colin, hey Drew, have you guys had a practice or a walkthrough at Lucas Oil yet? What does that setup in there look like? I know there's going to be two courts, but only one game at a time. Just what what is the atmosphere like in in a football stadium? Yeah, we uh, we haven't got a chance to be in there yet. We practiced yesterday at the uh, Civic Center, so I don't know what day. Maybe we get in there on Thursday, but I'm not really I'm not exactly sure. Man, hey, Drew and. In past years at Evansville or your first two years at Missouri, not last year, obviously, with no tournament, would you watch tournament games or was it kind of a superstition or you didn't like watching it if you weren't playing in them or how would how'd you kind of process that? Uh, no, I would I would watch them. I mean, obviously you're frustrated that you're not there because you have that opportunity, but I mean, I would still watch them just because, I mean, I feel like it's something that it's just a staple of college basketball. So, so. Ben Arnett again. Drew, uh, Conzo had a, a really interesting answer about the types of players that come out of the state of Indiana, the way basketball is taught in, in that state. Can you speak to just kind of, uh, I guess, the way the fundamentals are emphasized and, and, and what coaching in the state of Indiana really emphasizes to players? Yeah, I mean, I think they just, more than anything, they just teach like team basketball. Um, you're trying to get, you're trying to get everybody involved. You're trying to play to people's strengths. Um, I think more than that's more than anything, just playing, learning to play within a team and understanding your roles and, and not trying to, you never have to try to do too much. You can just, if you play good basketball and move well with and without the ball, then you'll usually be okay. Eric. Drew, you really briefly mentioned this on Sunday, but I think you said Austin Reeves and you played against each other at your former schools before you guys transferred to Oklahoma and Missouri, respectively. Is there a way you can see kind of the growth from him at Wichita State to now and you, Evansville to Missouri as well? Yeah, definitely. Back then, I mean, I think his freshman year, he was really known more as just a shooter. Um, he was coming in off the bench on a very good Wichita State team. Um, but yeah, he was Still a good, but he was still a great player. Um, but yeah, he was more of just a shooter. And now obviously he has the ball in his hands most of the time, um, coming off the ball screens, making plays. So he's definitely grown a lot since then. And I'm looking forward to it. Greg, do you have another one? Yeah, I'm just curious. Has the scout been entirely about Oklahoma or has the staff uh, done anything for what else could happen? No, it's been all about Oklahoma. Mason. Hey, Drew, there, there's a long lineage of teams that can get hot quickly and make a deep run from a lower seed in this tournament. How do you think that sort of lightning in a bottle format of the tournament works in your guys' favor? Um, I mean, I think, I think we're just, I don't think we're really worried about going in and trying to see, we're not really thinking about how many games we can win after this one. You know what I mean? I think it's just, you have to come in and, be, you have to be completely consumed with the team that you're playing next. I think if that's when you get in trouble is if you start looking ahead and looking, trying to see what you can maybe do. You got to make sure that you take care of the task at hand first. So that's really what we're focused on. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll uh, see you Saturday. Thanks, guys.